on everyone cam reddish he is still a 22 year old number 10 pick from the 2019 NBA draft. He's 6'8 with a 7'1 wingspan. He is a small forward, power forward, and a guy that has still a ton of potential, a ton of room, and a ton of growth. And he hasn't really gotten a fair shake. Uh, he was on Atlanta. Atlanta went a completely different direction, uh, went more win now rather than the rebuild route. He gets shipped to the New York Knicks, and Tibbs just doesn't want him, doesn't really play him, doesn't really give him a chance, and just seemed determined to trade Cam Reddish. So, it's not like he's a guy that's just terrible and it's like, oh, well, you know, like, let's just move off of him, you know, let's cut him, whatever. No, he's a guy that is young that it just ended up getting put in the wrong situations, really. He ended up with one team that just went a complete different direction in more of a win-now mode and then gets traded to the Knicks and immediately the coach just doesn't like him, doesn't want him. Did, never wanted them to trade for him to begin with. And the Lakers were a team that almost acquired Cam Reddish last season. It was a three-team deal between the Raptors, the Knicks, and the Lakers. And the Knicks ended up getting greedy, and the deal ended up falling through, which means the Lakers weren't able to get Cam Reddish. But Cam Reddish would be a perfect complement on the Lakers. A young player, 6'8 wing, which we absolutely need. That's our biggest need for the Lakers. Now, obviously, the Lakers are trying to work out a deal with like the Jazz or the Pacers. Uh, the Jazz deal would get some Wayne players, which would be fantastic. If you could get like a Malik Beasley and maybe even like a Bohan Brogdanovich, or if you can get one or the other, even, I'd still take that. I do think the Pacers deal is the better deal, depending on what you get back in return. But if there's a way for the Lakers to squeeze into this three-team deal of the Knicks and the Jazz as being reported, uh, then I think they should. Now, reports just came out that the Lakers want Cam Reddish. Uh, they want Cam Reddish whether it is part of the three-team deal or whether the Lakers trade individually for Cam Reddish uh, in some sort of deal. Cam Reddish's price tag is probably not very high. Again, Tibbs doesn't want him. Uh, it looks like the Knicks are going in a completely different direction. If the Lakers could end up with Malik Beasley, uh, Bohan Bogdanovich, and Cam Reddish as part of this three-team deal, that is a grand slam in my opinion. Because you just got three rotation guys, two of which are extremely young. Because again, Cam Reddish is only 22 years old. Malik Beasley is only 25 years old. And then you got Bohan Bogdanovich. That is perfect. Like you just got, you just basically filled all the holes on your roster, but you maintained youth. And you maintain guys that can really help for the future. You also got, you still maintain your cap flexibility, which is really good. And these guys are young enough to where if you do need to move them for whatever reason next year, teams would probably be more than happy to just take on a young, a young asset for, you know, a, a second round or, or just, you know, salary relief or something like that. You know, you, it's easier when it's young players with tons of room and potential stuff like that. So the Lakers would be in a great position if they could scrounge up Cam Reddish. Now, obviously there's a lot of questions on is the Jazz and the Knicks going to be able to get a deal done? They've tried on several occasions already based on reports, and it's fallen through every time. R.J. Barrett was a part of the most recent trade rumors, and it doesn't mean that he can't be traded anymore, but it just makes things a lot more difficult. But a deal could still be explored without Barrett in that trade. It just is it's starting to get a little more complicated, and the Knicks are starting to seem to like call the Jazz's bluff. The Jazz want... Uh, what appears to be too high of a demand, asking for too much, and the Knicks just don't want to give up that much. So hopefully they can get the deal done, because then the Lakers are basically going to get to put pick up all the scraps that are left over. But those scraps are really good scraps. You're not talking about, I mean, you're talking about like, you know, rich people scraps. You're talking about like, oh, an entire cake was left behind. I'll take that home to snack on later. That's what the position the Lakers are in right now. It's not like, oh, you're getting a breadcrumb. No, you're getting the entire loaf of bread uh, in these deals. Because Boan, great shooter, great rotation guy, a guy who can immediately be a starter for you, immediately make an impact. Cam Reddish, again, another guy who could be super effective for you. He's had moments throughout his uh, short-lived career. Uh, and he's a guy that's very young, is going to have room to grow. He's a wing guy, which would also be beneficial because we lost Stanley Johnson. You know, we traded Stanley Johnson and THT for Patrick Beverly. And the whole thinking was like, why did you do that unless you have another deal move, like in the process? Well, even if it's just for Cam Reddish, 
I'm all for that. Like, let's say we can't, let's say the Jazz and the Knicks deal just completely falls through, right? Let's say it doesn't work out, right? And Utah's like, you know what? We don't want to do the deals. You know, we don't want to trade Beasley and Boan and stuff because, you know, we, we're not trading Mitchell yet and we want to at least, as long as Mitchell's on the team, be relatively competitive. Okay, fine. Lakers could still go do the Pacers deal. And if you're the Lakers, I'm hitting up the Knicks and going like, hey, we'll get, what do you want for Cam Reddish? You know, we'll give you a couple seconds, you know, we'll give you like some uh, piece, you know, maybe like a win in Gabriel, something like that. Although I, I do kind of want to see what they get with Winion. I just think that Cam Reddish is the guy you got to take the flyer on. So if you could do like a win in Gabriel and like a second round pick, something like that for Cam Reddish, because the Knicks just seem to want to unload Cam Reddish. Let's do that. Sign me up immediately. Let's go get Cam Reddish. Then let's go do the Pacers deal, right? If we could, if we could land Miles Turner, let's say, okay, let's, let's look at the whole picture, right? Let's say this deal could work out. Then we could realistically end up with Patrick Beverly, Cam Reddish, Buddy Heald, and Miles Turner. Like that, that to me, that's a great offseason. You, that that legitimately is a great offseason. You got a, a 3 and D wean player with tons of potential and growth to improve and get better. You got Patrick Beverly, who's a win-now player, that is a 3 and D player. You'd get Buddy Heald, who's a sniper, although he doesn't offer much outside of that, and his contract is kind of iffy, but he would be an expiring contract next season, which would make things a lot easier to move off of. Uh, you probably don't have to give up both firsts in that deal, and if you could go get... Uh, you know, Miles Turner, now you got a top elite shot blocker, one of the best shot blockers in the game, and a guy that could get you 12 to 15 and, you know, 7 8 rebounds a game. That's a home run, in my opinion. So I hope the Lakers are still in, in the process, touching on, like I said, based on the reports, it looks like the Lakers are targeting Cam Reddish, whether it's in the three team deal or separate deal. You could theoretically get Cam Reddish in a separate deal or. You could even work it into like the Pacers deal. You know what I mean? Like try to work something out. Maybe the Pacers want to unload something. Or maybe you could get like a Fournier. Maybe the, maybe look at it like this. What if they're like, well, we'd rather have Buddy Heald over like a Fournier or like a Derrick Rose or something like that. Maybe you could kind of like, okay, well, we'll take Miles Turner. You get uh, Buddy Heald. We'll take, you know, Cam Reddish and Evan Fournier. I would rather have Evan Fournier over a, a, a Buddy Heald personally, just because I think Buddy Heald, as great of a shooter as he is, he offers you nothing else. Evan Fournier doesn't put up as much of the volume, but he's not a terrible shooter, and at least he plays defense, or at least tries to play defense, and can do a little more than Buddy Heald can. I don't know. I'm just not as high on Buddy Heald as many are. I am high on Cam Reddish. I think Cam Reddish was an incredible talent in high school, in college, and was supposed to be that incredible talent in the NBA. We saw some flashes. We saw some moments. Problem is, is that he went to an Atlanta team that at the time was trying to rebuild and then everything changed. You know, they went and got all the piece, Gallinari, all that stuff. And then it just became a completely th different thing. And they ended up moving him because he was kind of the odd man out, right? It's like, we don't want to trade our, our win now, guys. We're not really in a rebuild situation anymore. Just in the Eastern Conference Finals, like, and they ended up trading Cam Reddish, and Cam Reddish just unfortunately ended up being the odd man out, and going to a team where the coach didn't want him. You know, like, the GM made the deal, made the trade, and then Gabe was like, here you go, Tibbs, I got you a nice young, uh, small forward, power forward, and Tibbs was like, I don't want this guy, I didn't tell you, I told you not to trade for him. I mean, if, if, according to the reports, which... It seems like that's the case because they seem to just be willing to just give Cam Reddish for pieces. And he's only 22 years old. He's as young as half the players drafted. It's the same thing I've been talking about with THT. The only difference is this guy is 6'8 with a 7'1 wingspan. That is that is a huge... Even if he's just a big body that plays defense. Perfect. You know, like, if we, like if that's all we need at this point, right? So hopefully it works out with Cam Reddish. I would love to acquire Cam Reddish one way or another, whether... It's the Lakers uh, doing the three-team deal, or it's uh, the Lakers just doing an individual deal. However you shake it, go get Cam Reddish. If you can get Cam Reddish, that's a grand slam in my opinion. Um, that would be awesome because I really, I still believe Cam Reddish could be a solid player. Not saying he's going to be a star or anything like that. I mean, you never know. He's only 22 years old. But I'm not. I, realistically, I think he could be a real rotation guy, a real solid three and D 
small forward, power forward in this league. I really do. I mean, you could even run him as a small ball center with a 7-1 wingspan. You know, like that's huge. So uh, it's just something to keep in mind. Um, but anyway, as always, those are my thoughts and opinions, and I pass the question on you. Let me know yours down in the comment section below. What do you think? Do you think, yes, if you're the Lakers, go get Cam Reddish. Whether it's the three-team deal, whether it's the Knicks straight up, whatever you have to do, go get Cam Reddish. Or do you look at it another way and you're like, no, like, you know, we could do without him. I just, I, like I said, I think, in my opinion, the best possibility, the best possibility that could end up happening is, like, they work out a deal to where they get Buddy Heald, Miles Turner, and, like, Cam Reddish, or, like, Bowen, uh, something like that. But if they could work it out to where they get Beasley, Reddish, and, uh, and Bogdanovich, I just... I don't know how you don't do that. I think that's just because you basically solve all of your wing depth issues all in just one trade. Boom. There's all there's all your three and D guys. There's all your wing depth. Perfect. You're in a great position. But anyway, again, love to hear your thoughts and opinions, however you feel about it, down in the comment section. That being said, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, follow by the bell notification, stay up to date with all things sports, join this wonderful community and all of our discussions. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.